Welcome back to another Bolts Analysis. I'm your host Chris as we look at the Tampa Bay Lightning and the rest of the NHL. Today we're going to be focusing on the Metro, grading the Metro. Favourite team? Gosh, I wonder. It's the Carolina Hurricanes. There's a lot to love for me about the Carolina Hurricanes. Like, last year was a great story, but alone, like, it's not just that. I think, like, I like sort of the, um, the brass bonanza sort of thing that they have, that they sort of managed to carry stuff over from Hartford. John Forston is one of the best commentators to listen to. His play-by-play -play commentary is fantastic. He's just got so many phrases. Hey, hey, what do you say? The Canes get out of dodge. Kicked out with a purpose by Morazic. That is a voice and a half. That is fantastic. Like, if only I could listen to every game and it was always John Forston. That's not quite the case. And there are as good commentators out there. But... Yeah, I enjoyed the Canes, I enjoyed the Storm Surge, uh, I enjoy uh, Hurricane Man by Urinating Tree who sort of like sort of started doing stuff about Carolina when they weren't very good a couple years ago and no one was coming to their games! But now I think for Carolina it's a little better. But in any case, they seem like fun, they seem like a good fan base. I mean, the whole sort of David Ayer Zamboni gate thing, uh, you know, disaster for Toronto. For, for Carolina, fantastic. Like, absolutely. They have, you know, milked that for all it's worth. And why not? Why not? Starting at the top of this bloodbath, because it really has been the Metro this year, Washington Capitals. I'm going to give a B, uh, not an A, because I think if you're a Washington Capitals fan, it hasn't quite been perfect this season, has it? It's good that you're top of the Metro, but there's just, it's not completely there, I don't think. Not completely. There's been a lot of positives, like Ovechkin. Getting 700, but it did feel like there was a, like, for a couple of weeks or so, it was just like, it was all about getting Ovechkin his goals, and not about getting the results. And I feel like that kind of weakened Washington a little bit, like, it's a team sport, don't just focus on Ovechkin. You've got other good players, for goodness sake. Yes, if you lost Ovechkin, it would be bad, but hey, you've still got John Carlson. You've still got TJ Yoshi. You've still got Kuznetsov. You've still got Tom Wilson, who is, like... I mean, the nicest thing I can say is he's a good enforcer. Most people would just call him goon and be done with it. But to be fair, the what Capitals use him and he, you know, he plays his role well. I think, though, that there is the obvious weakness, isn't there, for Washington this year. The goaltending has been a bit... Mm, it's just the fact that Holtby, like, for years and years and years, has been like, man, he's good. But this year, there's just been some bad performances. I'm kind of thinking, like, you know, the home game against Nashville... There's a game where they lost 7-2 to the Flyers and, and they lost most re again to the Flyers at home. There's just been the odd game where it's just like, mm. I mean, to be fair, to be fair, he set up the, uh, he practically set up that overtime winner uh, against the San Jose Sharks. That was a nice moment. And Sam Sonoff has been a very good rookie goalie. But for me, that's just the one thing that the Capitals just need to work on a little bit. Because if it did come to the playoffs, it's like, well, you do kind of have to start Holtby because he's your starter. But... Do you have confidence that he's going to be able to get you another Stanley Cup? Because that's probably what you want. You want to get back to where you were in 2018. You don't want 2019 where you went out in the first round. Moving on. The Flyers. Definitely an A. Definitely an A. And the only reason I guess you might give them a lower grade is just like, well, I'm still not convinced they're doing anything in the playoffs. But are you kidding me? I would hate to face the Flyers in the playoffs. They are strong throughout. There's, I mean... There probably is a weakness, but good luck finding it at the moment. I think the best example of how good the Flyers have been this year is that they had a home and home against the New York Rangers. And you kind of thought, ooh, the Rangers, they're coming up, they're looking strong, they could be, and Flyers are like, sit down, class dismissed, we are better than you, deal with it. And they figured out a lot of stuff that was wrong, now they're clicking, now they're hot. Um, and the only thing I think that you, yeah, like you could say in criticism is like, they still haven't done anything in the playoffs. It's like, well, wait, you just wait. They will be strong. Moving on to the Penguins. I'm going to give it a C. I'm going to give it a C. Uh, I could be harsher than that, to be honest. But I'm putting a lot of mitigating factors in, into it, mainly the injuries. Good gracious. I think the worst one for Pittsburgh is probably just like losing Gensel because Gensel was carrying that team and all of a sudden into the boards. And he was out regardless of what ha has been happening. Like, he still is out. He's still injured as far as I know. So that was a big loss. I just feel like the Penguins in the last month or so have lost a lot of the momentum. I would have been giving the Penguins an A about a month or so ago. But just some horrible results. 
I'm not sure the trades have paid off at the moment. That defense is giving sort of neutrals nightmares. Chris the Tang, it's the the aim of the game is not to see how many times you can turn the puck over. It ain't. And yet, you do seem to be like, hmm, well, my you know, I mentioned about sort of six or seven last time. Let's try and go for double figures. And everyone else is going, yeah. It just kind of feels like they're in the same spot they were last year, sort of, you know, from 12 months ago. It's like, yes, you're making the playoffs. Are you favourites to get, you know, to the second round, even? No. And that does feel like a, quite a large fall from grace for Pittsburgh, considering, you know, back-to-back -back Stanley Cubs. Uh, quite recently. Moving on to the Carolina Hurricanes. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm going to give a C because it just kind of feels like sort of they haven't handled the expectations great. It's not necessarily that they're playing bad, but I feel like they did need to step up their game and they haven't quite done that. There's been some positives, you know, Sebastian Yarho still clicking along, and there's been some, again, mitigating factors, like losing Dougie Hamilton, that was a big loss. They've got Justin Williams back, though. I like what they've done recently. Uh, Morgan Geeky, they were just like, hmm, let's try it. Let's try a rookie. Let's see what he does. And wallop, he has been, you know, three goals in two games. Amazing. So I think, like, if they do that, and also with Carolina, sort of it was a bit unfortunate losing both the goalies, and it's like, well, you had time at to trade, the trade deadline hadn't happened, so why didn't you get anyone in? But they do, like, Mrazic has come back, so I think they've just about righted the ship. But I don't know, I feel like now, like, the surprise factor is gone, so in a playoff series against either Washington or Boston, mm, I think the Canes would be the underdog, and they'd, they'd like to be the underdog, but... I don't know. I don't think they could do a repeat of last year's Eastern Conference final. But hey, if they make the postseason two years in a row, maybe that's enough. I think for some Kings fans, that would be seen as a success. Moving on to the Columbus Blue Jackets. And I think, I think to be fair, I'm going to give a B. Because, yeah, it doesn't seem to be quite as good as last year. And yes, I think at the time of the season pause, the Jackets were like wobbling on the edge of the wildcards and might be missing the postseason. But man... That team has not only been dismantled over the summer, but just keeps getting injury after injury after injury after injury after injury. I'll stop. But seriously, is there anyone left? And it was just the fact that sort of the team did step up. Like when Corpusalo got injured and it looked bad, Elvis Merzlikin was like, hey, I'm a rookie goalie. Here's us try and see how many shutouts I can get. Like, good gracious, Elvis, where is this big coming from? You were awful when you first got thrown into the deep end. And now, yeah, he, for a bit, he was flying. And then it did kind of catch up with them. They just took one injury too many. I think the Seth Jones one sort of kind of really crippled them. And they do just look like sort of all the fight and gutsy bravado. They don't quite have the skill, uh, the talent to be able to sort of stay alive in the playoff race. But man, they're still in there. So I think you have to give them a B. Not necessarily an A, but I think... Yeah, no, fair play for still being alive, Columbus. Uh, New York Islanders are moving on to... Hmm, hmm, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be good. Uh, to be honest, I'm giving an E. At the moment, I'm giving an E in their current state. Like, overall, looking at the season, it's not been too bad. But since that sort of blockbuster run in October, November, which is like all 15-game point streak, eh, eh... They weren't pretty to watch to begin with, but that was fine because you knew that was how Barry Trotz was going to play them. They're not superstars, but the work ethic's good. They don't even have that at the moment. There's been some awful results. Like, there's just been some sloppy results. Like the one where, I don't know, they, well, they were 4 up against the Capitals. They threw that one away. Uh, losing 6-2 at home to Montreal, getting shut out at home by Boston. It's just... Ugh. To begin with, earlier in the season, the, the Islanders had the Lightning's number. They had him. And so I was like, well, that shows you how well organised they are. And then they went to Tampa, and Tampa were just like, easy, we just match your style a bit. You know, you play gritty, we play gritty for a bit. And the Islanders didn't have a plan B. I feel like that's the thing for the Islanders, there isn't a plan B. When the work ethic drops, the talent, there's, there's not enough talent there to sort of make up for that. They don't really have enough. If the season resumed, I wouldn't, couldn't see them getting back into a playoff spot. Not really. I don't think they'd have, be able to be, stay consistent enough. Um, yeah, I think this has been very disappointing, uh, the last few months especially. Um, it's, 
It's kind of like the, you know, being a buffalo. Yeah, yeah, great. You were great in October and November. You've got to be good throughout. Uh, moving on to the Rangers. Now, the Rangers, I am going to give a C. And that might seem a little bit harsh, because the Rangers have been, in a lot of ways, a revelation. We were all expecting them to be awful. They're still in the wildcard race. Like, they're still, like, being very competitive. But again, for me, this is a bit like sort of the Metropolitan version of the Minnesota Wilds. It's like, okay, the rebuild is going better than expected. That's good. But what are you going to do if you did get a wildcard spot? Because when I've watched the Rangers against teams like Boston, it's become painfully apparent that they're not ready. Like, painfully apparent. The last game they played against Boston, it was just like, no, no, they've got you. Like, you're trying, but they they know your strengths, they know your weaknesses, and they're exploiting it. The game against Washington recently was a bit better, but that still got quite wild, and I think, like, sort of, you know, a stronger team would have sort of made sure that Washington didn't get back into that game and take it to overtime. And obviously, when they played the Flyers recently, they were found quite wanting. So I think there's lots of like. Shesterkin has been a good find. Chris Crider, it's a bit unfortunate with the injury. I'll take that into account. Mika Sabanajad, that's been fantastic. But just overall, it's just like, it's okay, it's okay. But we, yeah, I think if you miss the playoffs this year, actually, that would be better for you. Give you another season, then you really will be strong. And lastly, the New Jersey Devils. Ha <laughs> ha uh, Right, I'm going to give an E. I'm going to give an E. Because it hasn't been a complete failure, but oh, it really nearly has been, hasn't it? I think the thing that really made has, has made me feel like the Devils have really been bad this year is just the fact that they hyped themselves up way too much. Way too much. They're like, oh yeah, man, we've got the number one draft pick. We've got P.K. Subban. We've got this. We've got that. We're going to be so much better. Even if you improved a bit, you'd have been in a fight for the wild card. So don't... Don't try and act like you're all of a sudden playoff ready. That doesn't happen. Like, no, no, like, because you're gambling on so much. You're going to be like, oh, yeah, because P.K. Subban is going to get back to what he was at Montreal. Or that Jack Hughes is just going to come out of the traps flying. All this, all the weight of expectation when you didn't have a great team to begin with, you just crashed yourselves. You crashed, you did it to yourselves. The own goal, essentially, the go, Toronto, the overtime winner, like, in January, was a perfect example of that. You shot yourselves in the foot by hyping yourselves up when you didn't quite have enough to suggest that you were even ready for a wildcard spot. It's been better since Heinz has gone. It's been better since you fired the GM. You're getting back into it. There's been some good results here and there. But, I mean, just things like the goalie situation for New Jersey. Like, that's been a fiasco, hasn't it? Like, sort of... You know, Mackenzie Blackwood has just... He's, he's been doing what he can. But Louis Domingue wasn't very good. Um, no. No. It just... There's... There's little bits there and there. There's little bits. But I think for the Devils next year, just assume that it's not going to go that you won't make the playoffs and just lower the expectations, lower it down, get rid of the hype, and then actually that will probably benefit you because the pressure will be off and you can just play good hockey. Because I think now the pressure has been off for the last couple of months when it's been so clear that the Devils would not make the postseason. They've been playing better. They've been playing better. But Devils, oh dear. That's how not to handle an off-season. How not... <laughs> the perfect example would just be like, we're going to take the hope up and up and up and up the mountain and push. Off the side of a mountain went the Devils as soon as the season started. That's life sometimes. But that is it from me. Thank you very much for watching. This has been another Bolts Analysis. And remember to look at Raleigh. There's a hurricane of ice coming through.